Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robert Law Miles Australia. Uh, this video is going to be a, a bit of a quick uh, look at the the underground wire marker locator, so basically a wire fault finder. Um, and this particular model is the NF826 uh, from the foyer. Um, I get a lot of questions, uh, particularly between what is the difference between this particular model um, and also the uh, the NF820 model, which is the other one I've taken a video of uh, previously, uh, which is actually this model here. Um, so basically, the biggest differences uh, between the two models really is that this one has a digital screen uh, that gives you a bit more information on it, um, and the uh, NF820 uh, does not. Um, it only has the lights um, and, the, and the, um, the, the strength settings of the actual machine. So on the uh, on the on the, the uh, NF826 model, um, essentially you get obviously you get the transmitter, um, the, the wires that come off it, um, alligator clips on the end there. Um, you also get a little ground stake for actually pushing it into the ground to actually connect your negative cable to. Um, there's also some uh, little probes there that you can actually connect to the end of these as well. So these come off obviously. You can take that off there like that, and you can connect the probe on there so you can put it into. Um, test circuits and power boards and, and uh, anything else where you don't need the alligator clips connected. Um, it comes with a charging cable obviously so you can charge, they've both got both units have got um, rechargeable batteries in them um, and obviously you've got the receiver here as well. Um, it comes in a nice little carry case uh, and obviously all the manual and instructions as well. So yeah look back to the real difference and it really is to do with the uh, with the LCD screens on these two models, on these two, two, uh, two pieces. Um, so if we turn on the, uh, the transmitter here um, we get basically the transmitter comes on and it actually tells you what level that's the level, level there so you can actually set the uh, the transmitter level much like the NF820 but this one's done digitally so you just press this one by pressing uh, the, uh, the level set button and then the up down arrows to set the level to different, to different levels it has three levels um, generally when we're using this I'll, I'll run through this in a second but generally we only use level one okay so we get the set um, and then we just hit the hit the play button there and it actually starts transmitting and it shows you on the screen that it's actually transmitting which is quite good and gives you a battery indication as well uh, and then on the receiver on the receiver end um, we turn the receiver on let's go back a bit so it doesn't actually just listen to off back a bit further um, so on the receiver we have the uh, the signal strength which can be in auto and you can also set that signal strength you know, if you press the menu button here it then changes that signal strength to manual and then you can actually, or the receiver strength I should say, and then you can set the receiver strength manually. You can turn it all the way down if you like, and all the way up. Okay. With this one I typically only use auto. Um, and then the other, it's, it's also got a, got a torch on the front of there if you need it. Um, and you can also set it to the NCV, uh, NCV setting which is detecting live wires. Okay. So to run this machine all we do um, is have it set to auto, have it turned on, and we just move it closer to the bit, and it goes up. So now it comes to the, the largest difference. The largest difference between the two is this little is that signal strength there, which is actually a digital digital number. So you see it goes from zero, goes up and down. If you go really really close, it actually goes up to around three or four hundred. The extra signal goes up there. Apologise for the noise, but that's how what how noisy it is. Um, let me just turn that off a second. So it really is that digital signal in there that actually that you can actually read and actually take a reading of what the signal strength is at different locations on your boundary wire. Whereas if you compare that with the NF820, um, you've really only got the sound to go by and then you've got these lights, this signal strength lights going up and down here. So you've just got a lot more information coming through onto the on the NF826 uh, than what you have on the uh, on the NF820. So I'll go over here and we'll just connect this up. Uh, to a wire that I have set up over here at the moment. So I just had a temporary wire set up and pegged down so we can actually see exactly what happens. So again, the negative wire, same as the NF820, you plug that in uh, to either a screwdriver on the ground or use the actual stake that actually comes with it because that's why it comes with it. Um, and you connect the uh, positive signal to one of your wires. Okay, so this wire here is the wire that's going that way around this yard. Okay. And I've also disconnected the other side here. This is the other side that's going this way around the yard. So disconnect both wires out of your base station um, and then connect it up. And typically, like I say uh, before, I generally set this only to level one because level one is generally all you need. Um, you can set it to level two so that you can pick up the signal while you're actually standing up. 
Um, and we'll do that just briefly just so you can see. So I'll set the level here, go up to set signal strength 2, set the level, press play again so you can see it's transmitting. Put that down and go get the receiver. Hmm. Okay, so we're currently standing about three meters away from any boundary. And I'll turn this on. Just to turn that on. Okay, and we'll leave it on auto. Walk over towards the boundary wire and you'll see that once you get... So we're now about, hmm, probably about one meter away from the boundary wire. And it starts, starts just starts reading a signal. So as we get closer, it goes up and up. We get closer and closer to the wire. Once we're right on the wire, we get a signal strength of 305, 308 thereabouts, which is the strongest signal. Okay? So while it's on signal strength 2, you can actually just put, put your hand down you know, within one metre of the boundary wire, and you can walk around your whole boundary wire. And if you've got a break in the wire, then it'll actually stop beeping when you go past that break. Okay. What I want to do for this little demonstration, though, is I want to set it to this signal 1. So it hasn't got a stronger signal, so we, again we come in here, press signal, this, this is the uh, level set, go down to level set 1, press play, and it's transmitting on level 1. And now if we go to the same spot on the wire, you'll see it doesn't start doesn't start picking up a signal now until it's within about probably 20 centimetres, about 20 centimetres from the wire before it picks up the signal. Um, so you follow that always around, around a boundary wire. And over here, so I can sort of demonstrate what the, the signal strength can do for you, I actually have uh, seven 1,000 ohm resistors here in line with each other across here. So that's essentially um, sort of simulating a, a bad joint, basically. So it's 7,000 ohms. It's not a break. It's just a bad joint, okay? Um, so I can show you exactly what this meter does compared to what the, uh, the, 86, the, the 820 will do, okay? So if we take this in here, and we take the signal that lives there, that's reading at about, around about 300, just, just under, just over 300. And if we go down to each point, it's now reading 280, 240, and around about 240, that's all 250, that one there. It's dropping down, it's dropping down to 245, 250, 235, 240, 230, so you can understand it. As, you get, as we're getting further and further along the resistance, um, the signal strength's dropping, so you can actually see the difference. So what I do with these particular machines, if we're looking for a wire that's not completely broken, is that I'll set it to what I've got it set to now, then I'll walk around the wire periodically, and I'll put the signal strength down, and we'll take a signal strength. And like I said, that's pretty much 300, and we'll go another you know, five meters down, or we'll do this every 10 or 20 meters uh, on your boundary wire, take another signal, and that's only 230, so essentially I know that there's something wrong with the wire between here and where I took the last reading. So you can work your way back until you can actually find where the actual, where the actual issue is. So that's really the biggest difference uh, between um, the NF826 um, and the NF820. Now, you can do, essentially you can do exactly the same thing with the, with the 820, it's just it's a little bit more difficult to understand exactly what's happening with the lights and the power. Now, whereas the 826 gives you just a little bit more information on how to use it. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions uh, on the uh, on either of the fault-finding fault wire detectors that we've got, um, or the multimeter and things like that we've got for actually detecting issues with your boundary wires, uh, please just flick us an email if you wish to sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can send us a message through our website. Just go to www.robotlawnmowers.com.au. Um, or you can find us on Facebook and uh, message us there. Just search for Robot Lawmars Australia. Thanks for watching.